Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on artists and management. Uh, for those of you who have not been introduced, my name is Cresho and I'm here today to give you some simple steps on how to acquire uh, either being managed or potentially getting on an agency or even if it was just managing yourself uh, in terms of up until you get to that point, um, knowing how to handle yourself uh, in the music industry and certain things that you might need to learn or know about that could be helpful for you. Okay, so number one is how to form a relationship. Okay, well, first I'd start by obviously doing some research on the internet and finding out who's actually out there. Uh, find out who these people are, you know, who you think you would like to be represented by, who you want to be kind of associated with. Uh, that's quite important. So, you know, you start with the basics there of finding out who's out there, okay? I always think it's good to know also what the person looks like, okay? Uh, that's obviously... Uh, can come into play if you are at, a, at an event or a festival or a club night or whatever. And if you see that person there, obviously you're prepared, you know what they look like, and it'd be a lot better if you can go up and introduce yourself. You know who they are. They might not know who you are, but you can introduce yourself and it, it looks good straight away that you know who they are and, and what they do. Um, I'd say going to events uh, and spotting someone is always great because obviously, you know, a handshake, I would say, is a lot more powerful than an email, for example, or a social media message. You know, once you've actually met these people in person, you probably will find it a little bit easier uh, to strike up a conversation. Um, you can also research the artist and the management and acquire the right email address or phone number if you feel confident of speaking on the, over the phone to them. Um, this can be done in many, on many platforms. You know, generally, if you go to a website, there'll be a list of people that are on that agency or management. Uh, and as long as you've done your research into finding out who that person represents, you know, potentially there's an opportunity there to get the right email address and speak to them via email. I would say that it's always better just to be you know, just a few short points about yourself and don't waffle too much, basically, whether that be on the phone or in an email or even face to face. Just try and be a little bit brief with them and let them know who you are, what you're about and what you're looking for. Understand their needs as well. People will buy into things for their reasons, potentially not just yours. And I think it's essential that you kind of do your research and find out, are you actually right for these kind of people? Um, and why would they be right for you? If you do get to meet them in person, I'd say don't be intoxicated and always be professional. It's very important, this one. Um, you know, you don't want to be showing up and, uh, you know, have alcohol breath or even cigarette breath, you know, make sure you have to have a mint in your mouth if you're speaking to these people in person. Always have a USB with you as well if you can. I think it's always helpful if you can have something you can just show what you're about, what you're doing, it looks more professional. And you know what? I think if you actually make an effort to meet these people, it's always better that you give them something exclusive. So maybe something that no one else has got. And that's going to make them a little bit more intrigued into the ways of what you're doing. And also hopefully that they'll listen to you know what you're about uh, and take you more seriously as an artist. So that's step number one. Number two. Uh, knowing what manager is right for you. You know, debating is always good as long as you can both agree and it's never one-sided. So basically, you know, if you have an idea, you know, it's not just all their ideas and it's not just all your ideas. Knowing they trust your artistic direction is essential uh, because they also need you to be able to create your own ideas and not just, again, them giving you the ideas. You know, if you can come up with some really good ideas that they appreciate, that's always uh, a good platform. I mean, if you come up with ideas and they don't appreciate it, then, you know, maybe you're not right for each other. Um, make sure that they don't have too many other artists, I would say is always a good one as well, because you know if you find managers that uh, or agents that have got too many artists, then you've probably got to say to yourself, well, am I actually getting the time from these people uh, that's gonna really, really help me? And also I think you need to be able to communicate and get through to your artists on a personal level. Um, what I mean by that is basically they could give you technicalities or things that you might not be familiar with in their world, but if they can explain it to you in your world or break things down, sometimes we don't always understand what things mean and they can break it down so you understand. So if they are actually giving you feedback, you know, you're not going to take it the wrong way. So it's, it's being communi communicated sorry, on a uh, personal level. Number three, the manager and the agent. Okay, so... There's a bit of a difference between being an artist manager and being an agent. Basically, a manager oversees every aspect of your business and has the power to dictate to your agent on certain things. So an agent generally will be presenting your manager 
with an offer for gigs. And then your manager has to agree before any further correspondence uh, are being sent to a, a promoter via the agent. So the third party will be the, obviously the, the promoter. Okay.